we have often postulated as to the precise age of the great monuments of Giza, undoubtedly the most astonishing structures left by the ancient world. There are many questions which persist regarding this ancient site. Who built these extraordinary buildings? Why did they build them? And of course, when was this unimaginably enormous task undertaken? Interestingly, there exists an enigmatic statue, which it seems, although predictably little shared by academia, actually predates this astonishing time within Earth's history. Quoted as possibly one of the rarest finds of its kind, according to Dr. Clarence Epstein, Senior Director of Urban and Cultural Affairs at Concordia University, where this remarkable item is housed. Not only can no one date the object, but there also exists a language etched into its form which is yet to be deciphered. As Dr. Epstein acknowledges, no expert, among the countless he has personally consulted over the past decade, can identify the sculpture's age, artistic tradition, or indeed recognize and decipher the ancient language found etched into its base. Dr. Epstein believes the statue is of a pre-dynastic age. It was originally taken from Alexandria by the Diniacopolis family. It was then shipped with 20 crates of antiquities from Egypt and the Middle East to Canada, where it still resides. However, its whereabouts prior to the shipment are unknown. The statue is of two nude subjects standing 67 centimeters high, one male and the other presumed female. This figure is also noted as possibly holding a child. They are depicted in a sitting position, with noticeable elongated skulls. Now known as the Starving of Sakura, this due to the figure's emaciated frames, just what could this statue represent, or indeed be trying to tell us? How old could it possibly be? And most interestingly of all, what could the enigmatic writing upon its base actually mean? As more research is undertaken, it is only a matter of time before we know its true identity once and for all. Countless arenas resulting in a continued academic perplexment still litter Egypt's Giza Plateau. The pyramids, the Great Sphinx, the enormous megalithic blocks which made them, not to mention the mountain of ancient yet clearly incredibly precise, seemingly highly advanced tool marks which can still be found across the still surviving fragment of its basalt floor. 1,000 plus ton ancient singing statues, mysterious staircases cut directly into an inexplicably enormous, mysteriously concrete like plateau, one strong enough to continue to be the foundation for the Great Pyramids themselves. The burning question then remains who built this magnificent place? And can it be proven that Along with these structures, not being the work of the currently claimed ancient Egyptians, but can be connected to countless other equally baffling ruins, a few even found in some of the most remote landmasses on Earth, proof, if there ever was, of a once highly advanced ocean-going, world-dominant, yet now lost civilization. Menkari, as mentioned in a previous video, the smallest of the pyramids, has undeniable polygonal casing stones, masonry in the exact same style and stone as that of ancient Peruvian sites. Yet in addition to these granite blocks partly encasing Menkur, Aswan, its quarry with its gargantuan unfinished obelisk, and indeed its temple, are yet another series of undeniable proofs as to the true identity of the original builders of ancient Egypt. Although, due to the clear similarity of the polygonal masonry, a now lost yet unique technique of placing seemingly randomly shaped stones without mortar perfectly together, with that of Sacsayhuaman, Machu Picchu, along with many other, the Temple of Aswan, when looked upon closely, possesses polygonal perfection. Created to the same level of accuracy as that of Cusco, However, we feel, due to the medium of creation being softer, that of sandstone, their abilities and accuracy 
in producing this loss masonry technique, which has now been identified all over the world, really shines through. Are we looking at the proof needed to not only connect the most incredible, unexplainably ancient megalithic sites worldwide? Where the pyramids, ancient Peru, Easter Island, Ethiopia, the list goes on, all built by the same lost civilization? We find the evidence to support such claim highly compelling. The Pyramid of Menkura may be the smallest of the three main pyramids of Giza, but some find this site to be one of the most intriguing to be found upon the Giza Plateau. Not only does the pyramid still possess casing stones of a polygonal style, nearly identical to that found throughout ancient Peru, and indeed now discovered globally, but it also possesses gigantic ancient megalithic blocks, exposed for all to see. These impossibly huge blocks of stone are clearly of a tremendous age, leading up to a once immaculately carved inner chamber. On the 28th of July, 1837, Howard Weiss rediscovered the upper antechamber of the pyramid. Within, the remains of a wooden anthropoid coffin inscribed with Menkura's name was found. This tomb did indeed contain human bones. However, this is now considered to be a substitute coffin. Radiocarbon dating on the bones also claim to have determined them to be less than 2,000 years old, which, according to certain researchers, suggests an all-too-common bungled handling of remains from another site. Furthermore, along with polygonal masonry, an inner chamber and three tiny accompanying pyramids, known as G3A, G3B, G3C, the age of this pyramid has also not been hypothesized or narrowed down to any specific era within the ancient Egyptian empire, making it an obscurity, and also, predictably, a lesser-known site within academic study and mainstream reporting. Who built the pyramid? Are the megaliths within the outer temple walls the same as those of the exoskeletons of the larger ancient Great Pyramids? An ancient anomaly which has been exposed mostly upon the east wing of Cheops by the removal of outer casing stones which we have in the past reported on, along with their clearly much younger age. In AD 1196, Al-Aziz Uthman, Saladin's son and the Sultan of Egypt, attempted to demolish the pyramids, starting with Menkura. However, and rather predictably, eight months in, they found that it was nearly impossible to destroy. Not only could they only remove one or two stones each day, when a stone fell, it would bury itself in the sand, requiring extraordinary efforts to free it. Wedges were used to split the stones into several pieces. Despite their efforts, workmen were only able to damage the pyramid to the extent of leaving a large vertical gash at its northern face. It is undoubtedly a highly intriguing pyramid. The Giza Plateau undoubtedly holds some of the most profound secrets ever left by the ancient world. Once lost beneath the sands of time, some of the most astonishing structures ever to have been rediscovered by our modern civilization. One of these astonishing, yet little shared sites, is a Syrian temple. Not only is the name uncannily similar to the constellation Orion, but the similarities with this supposed tomb to the many other structures which have subsequently been unearthed over the years is undeniable. Constructed with the same 100-plus ton pink granite blocks as many other temples found upon the plateau, its stone was too sourced from the once mysteriously abandoned Aswan Quarry, a distance of 300 kilometers away, an astounding distance to transport such blocks that, according to academia, were moved with no advanced technologies. Hidden upon one of the structure's enormous megaliths is what can only be described as a machine-accurate image of a flower of life. These two engravings, created with such precision, were somehow left upon the stone. We recently covered the claims made by John Anthony West regarding the water controversy of the Great Sphinx, 
relating to its theory of it once being a lion, aligned with Leo some 10,000 years ago. We uncovered overwhelming evidence which West must have been aware of to prove his theory not only untrue, but seemingly conspiratorial. What's peculiar regarding the actual connections with the flower, if of course authentic, is that other researchers such as Thrive maker Foster Gamble related it to the Taurus design, which he now believes is a signal from advanced beings on how to tap free, unlimited energy. A claim eerily reminiscent of our own recent research into a possible arc, regardless of others' hostile reception. We find his claims highly compelling. An announcement that seemingly slipped us by was made recently within Egypt. This announcement pertaining to an amazing discovery made within an area of the Giza Plateau that for a number of decades has been conveniently shut off from the public. Although the location is claimed to be a military training base, archaeologists have apparently been secretly beavering away within this remote slice of antiquity. Announced by the Supreme Council of Egyptian Antiquities, Egyptian authorities have apparently found the mysterious traces of the legendary Fourth Lost Pyramid of the Plateau. This provocative announcement stirred up a gale of protest among many Egyptologists, and the reason for this may be because the discovery might turn out to be highly controversial. Although the pyramid is in a very bad state, and this may be due to its immense age, with only a few rows of blocks remain, and these surviving blocks clearly displaying evidence to indicate that the missing blocks have simply eroded away over the eons. This ruin may not be the most important find in the area, or indeed, the purpose for the video. Along with these pyramidal remains at the site is another amazing anomaly. In the middle of this mysterious desert, an enormous staircase has been found, plunging into the desert floor. Seemingly excavated before this announcement and left for those who were fortunate enough to get access to the area to rediscover and photograph. This enormous staircase plunges straight through a limestone basin many meters in depth. This surgical slice has revealed an astonishing implication. It has revealed that the Giza Plateau does indeed extend this far. Not only that, but it demonstrates the sheer, unimaginable cubic size of this area of stone. A block of stone that was apparently man-made. Where this staircase actually leads to is as yet unknown, although it is thought to drop far below that which is currently visible, and preliminary scans of the area are suggesting that it plunges through the plateau, deep into an ocean of groundwater below. By examining the pictures of the discovery, it appears that the site has indeed been excavated from the sand, having most likely been submerged from view beforehand. The question is, who did these excavations? Who built this unbelievable structure, or indeed, the mind-bogglingly enormous Giza Plateau? Who built the pyramids and sphinx upon it? Where did such an enormous stone plateau come from? How did they shape and carve such mysterious structures with such blocks? Or perhaps, most importantly of all, where does this staircase lead? Did whoever undertake this excavation task manage to discover where it led? More research and exploration will undoubtedly be undertaken over the next few years. We will, of course, keep you posted.